but if you look at all the near-death experience studies now, I mean, there are, you know, they've studied thousands of people with near-death experiences and they, they, they're dead and they can see everything that's happening to them, right. which means we're not, if those are correct, and I happen to think they are, based on personal you know, experience, not necessarily a near-death experience, but a lot of things I've talked about in other episodes, but they're, they're, uh, we're not just our bodies. Um, I, I have, for me, that's a 100% thing based on a lot of things. Um, and so it's, it's very similar because it opens the door to, well, what are we? And then what is this place? And again, the government could solve these, these questions so easily if they wanted to. I mean, the problem is we have to start asking these questions because they exist. The right. questions exist. I mean, all of these questions, whether somebody agrees the earth is flat or not, um, and people have explanations for these questions, but a lot of these are really uh, legitimate questions. Right. Yeah, don't, again, don't believe what I'm telling you as right. Find truth. your own truth. Find your own truth. I will not, be, look, this, this, this topic is way too deep for me to try to convince you in an hour yeah, or two or two hours. So most people take days. Other people took take weeks. It took me months because I had, well, I had less material to work with. But I literally sat on this thing for months before finally I just gave up. You know, I tried. I pulled on threads and I pulled on threads before finally I just said, you know what? I can't prove the globe anymore. It sounds insane, but I couldn't do it. So I just put a series of videos out there called Flat Earth Clues. And I said, OK, Internet hive mind, prove me wrong. Tell me where I screwed up in this. And you think, okay, well, why didn't you listen to the people? You must have gotten shot down. No, I didn't get shot down. People kept writing me. People kept calling me saying, there, what, there's, there's more to this. Subject matter, matter experts started getting a hold of me saying, you might be onto something. And nobody called me up and said, you're, you're absolutely wrong. Here's why. Well, you'd think that somebody would have. If I was right. dead wrong, That's why the- hasn't anybody... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, well, that's exactly it. it you yeah. know, nobody, the reason why I'm so excited to talk to you because, and, you know, people, uh, Neil, Neil, De, I don't know, Neil Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he talks about in the Southern Hemisphere that the, uh, you know, you look at one of the stars and it shifted or something. And, and um, you know, and then the, I'm sure there's a counter to that, to whatever he's saying. The point yeah. is the government, I, there's a lot of great people in the government. It is compartmentalized. Academics, the same thing. If you want to control everything, you control it at the top. It's very clear that that's true. It's right. very, very clear. And the fact is that we're not getting all the information about history, about the, the universe, about life. There's a lot more about medicine, about money, um, with true motivations, and I want to send forgiveness and love to those people, even if they're trying to screw us over, or we're some experiment, or something else. But there are so many legitimate questions that uh, th- they can sit there and say people are crazy to talk about the flat Earth. Well, answer the questions, and they'll say, "Well, we don't have to. It's so crazy, we don't have to answer it." They tried to do that with aliens, and now Obama went on Jimmy Kimmel, and he said uh, jokingly. But he said, and it, to me, it didn't look like maybe he was joking so much. He said, well, they don't want us to know that they're there. Something to that effect, that they don't, they don't want to be discovered. So therefore, no. you know. Yeah, you, you don't. I mean, part of the reason why it has been hidden is because you don't want you. The big key here, and I've, I've seen this through all the research I've done, is whoever built this place wants us acting naturally. They don't want to be, we, we don't want, they don't want us acting like we've got some heavy handed person looking over our shoulder. They want to see what we do on our own, which makes sense. It answers one of the, the alien questions. Why isn't an alien ship ever landed in Main Street, USA, gone out, taking pictures, shook a few hands, signed some autographs and take off? Because it would, it would influence the core of the society so deeply that they may not be able to recover. You know, you want to pick up somebody in a forest or a boat? Oh yeah, you can totally do that. But you're but you're absolutely right. Let me let me let me do, throw one more thing in here. Flat Earth is the open ultimate open minded test. I don't care what conspiracy you're into, and I'm right. not going to rattle them all off, <laughs> but, because there's a lot of them out there. But and which is interesting because this is the only conspiracy where I've seen where consp- even conspiracy guys going that thing's a piece of, of crap. I don't want to touch that in a million of years. So, but if you can you can get your head around this, 
once you do, it opens everything else up. Then you don't judge any other conspiracy. You're open-minded to them all. I mean, no, I don't believe that Bigfoot and Elvis had a baby or anything like that. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not going to completely slam that guy that brings it up. I'm going, you know what? Tell me more. What do you got? I, you know, beforehand, I might laugh him out of the room. But because everybody starts out, everybody in this community starts out hating it. The T-shirt the reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. And it's true. Everybody tries to debunk flat earth. If you if you in your first day say, you know what, flat earth, that's a pretty good idea. I actually think there was something wrong with you. <laughs> so Right, yeah. based on all the programming. And, oh, yeah. Um, you know, and we even had a video that was pretty popular about a guy named David Wilcock and Corey Good, and people were attacking them. And my, my whole video was that, well, uh, meaning people from the UFO community were complaining about these guys and... And they were just like, hey, we're trying to, you know, they weren't really attacking back, but they were getting attacked. And it's sort of like, I mean, every, somebody could just say it's all crazy. So why, you know, why do you need to sit there and pick everything apart? I mean, anything anybody could say could be crazy since we're possibly not even, quote unquote, really here. I mean, sure. it, as far as I know, we're, uh, we're a frequency which means that uh, in, in some ways, this is real, but it just depends on your definition of real. I mean, you could, exactly. It's, you could it's real. It's real to us. So I generally don't go down that road because, look, as long as we think it's real, that doesn't that doesn't matter so much. But but you're right. I mean, yeah, you could be a frequency. Remember, there's television stations broadcasting around you all. There's there's country music right. in the air right around you happening. But you can't hear it because you don't have the technology in front of you. I mean, you, you might, but you don't have technology to listen to it. So who's to say that there aren't other dimensions? And one other thing, real quick, which is, if you think it's so unbelievable, come on, play the odds here. Out of all the fantastic science fiction stories that we have written over the years, right? all the Twilight Zone episodes, all the Star Treks, all, all, all the Outer Limits, didn't you think that one of them might accidentally be the, you know, be the one? It, it, it's even a even a, uh, a stopped clock is right twice a day. So who's to say that we haven't already written this story, and it, it's just it's out there. Well, yeah, and there's so many places to go. I I would love to really find out, Mark. Um, what do you think is going on in terms of when we've talked about other realms and dimensions, and also mm -hmm. the creator specifically? Yeah. Because you've done all this research, I think a lot of it brings up some really important questions, which I think, based on the fact the government has been up to some things, they haven't always been honest. Heck, we had slaves. It was legal to have slaves. So, you know, the right. government, we're not perfect, right? So to say they should prove some things that other people could think is silly, I mean, you could go back in time. The, the U.S. Patent Office in 1900, didn't they say apparently that we've invented everything so we're stopping patents. No more patents in 1900. Everything's been invented. So, I mean, you know, and people could say, they, they could have said, well, it's silly to think we're going to invent more things. So the government having to address things that other people think are silly, I don't right. really, I, I think they should be proving these things. They should, they should give more emphasis. And I think they're going to have to. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to hide everything uh, I don't know if it's going to be in our lifetime, but you know, going forward, it's going, it's getting increasingly difficult to hide these things. I, I believe so. But let me ask you, what do you think, based on all your research, mm -hmm. is going on in terms of you know the creators of this place? Like when you trace back, because you trace back and you think, okay, the Earth is flat. This is BS. Space, right. you know, there's a ceiling there. Um, yep. You know, what? What is your real feeling about what's going on with aliens, other realms, other dimensions, and the creators of, of this place? Other dimensions exist, I have no doubt. Uh, as far as other realms go, do I think this is a one-off? No. Nor do I even think that we are unique to this place. Meaning, with something as sophisticated and something that can be added on and expanded on like this place can, that we are definitely not the first 
people to rent this apartment. <laughs> you, you, the, right. There are civilizations going back a long, long ways. Right. And we all know this. The, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India. How, what, what, how old are the pyramids of Giza or the Bosnian pyramids, which they haven't even unearthed yet? Sure. We, uh, you know, what version are we? If our civilization only goes back, say, 5,000 years unbroken, but we know there's other civilizations back, you know, the Sumerians, uh, you know, are the Nephilim involved? At one point, the all the continents were a supercontinent that was known as Pangaea, and that, of course, continent works way better on a flat model. What version was, was running on through there? Are we version 7? Are we version 27? We don't know, but how far, who was here before us? You know, what... The That's right. Atlantis, Bimini Road, how far back does it go? Go back to um, Tepe or whatever, that, that place. There Turkey. you go. Yeah. I mean, so do I think we're, we're not a one-off, and if you're going to build one of these places, you're going to build more than one of these places. And, and why, why not a whole bunch more? And if that's the case, then how many layers are there? And I don't want to get into a Russian stacking doll argument because that then you'll go crazy eventually. But because <laughs> I do, I try to live one world at a time if I can, and still I'm trying to figure out this one. But it appears that there are more there are more than of these than than just this. And if that's the case, that means that you know what I mean. What happens to the soul? I don't want to speculate too much. On you know what happens when we die, other than I firmly believe that this place is just a temporary housing, a perspective regeneration house, more than more than anything, where we are here to understand what it feels like to be limited, what it feels like to be in perpetual conflict. And as far as the creators go, I've been fond of saying, okay, you know, d there's only two ways you can go with this, and that is uh, it is either uh, created by the divine or God subcontracted out the work. One of the two. Either way, it's some advanced form of technology with a civilization that's way beyond what we are. So if some golden egg-like spaceship decide to land somewhere in Africa, uh, who's to say that there wouldn't be religions popping up out of nowhere? Or who's to say that the major religions, religions wouldn't see this civilization as the divine. I mean, you're kind of splitting hairs there. What's the difference between a, a civilization that has technology which is so far beyond us we would determine it as magic and a divine power that waves its hand and also creates magic? You know, kind of a kind of a toss up. So, but I but I have no doubt that this place was created, which is why this particular theory above all other conspiracy things has resonated so much more quickly and so much p more positively because it's a message of hope. And that is every other conspiracy has a re is a really, really dark. I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not going to list them off. You know what they are. They're all dark and brooding and Heath Ledger and Batman Joker type stuff. I mean, you know, sure. it's all, it's all dark, dark, dark shades of gray. Whereas this has a real golden age. I'm not saying it's a kumbaya moment, but it has a real golden age feel to it. Which is uh, uh, you, you, the music is a perfect example. Find me a happy folk song about JFK. You're not going to be able to find it. But you look up flat Earth music and flat Earth songs. We've created 200 original songs in the last couple of years. Just uh, you know, and they're all really positive songs. I mean, yeah, there's one or two dark brooding songs in there. I think they're kind of <laughs> grungy. But the rest are really, really happy. How does that happen? How? Why is does the flat Earth involve more women than all the other conspiracies? Because it has this cool message of hope, which is, yeah, you may be in a small, you know, a much, much smaller place compared to a, like an infinite universe and infinite and lonely. Now you're all in one boat and you're all and not only that, but you were created deliberately for a reason. And everything in here is intimate to you. Uh, somebody asked me once uh, if you're killing astrology. And I say, no, I'm not killing astrology. I go, you, you have the lights in the sky, the plants and the stars, you know, a wonderful clock system, very fantastic clock system, have this great meaning and, and can foretell certain things and, and have an impact on your life. Great. I'm just saying that they aren't millions of light years away. I'm saying they're right there. They're really, really close. And not only that, but it's your astrology system. It's not the rest of the universes. It's made just for you. Flat Earth is a message of hope. That's that's what I've been, you know, my underlying tone that I'm trying to get out there for people.
Well, I love what you're saying. I mean, to me, I think that I wouldn't even use the word conspiracy. To me, it's a set of questions that could be answered. And sure. uh, whether the earth is flat or not, I don't know. Unless somebody goes to space and takes some video like you're talking about, and, uh, and then we all can do it if we have enough money, and they actually let people do that and not just say they're going to let people do that and then don't let them and all uh, kinds of nonsense that we're yeah. all up to. And Absolutely. Tell- we're, we, we have been robbed of, of part of our future because of what you just said there. Where uh, The Jetsons is a series from, what, the 1960s? That's right. And then they cut but, it off. Where, where are the Jetsons cars? Where are our That's flying right. cars? Where are the cities on stilts? None of these things. We, we have been denied a huge chunk of our future because they were afraid of what might happen. Yeah, we got some cool televisions, but cars really haven't changed. Airplanes really haven't changed. We, nobody's got phasers. Or anything like that, we've been we've been stunted in that regards, and that that I'm a little sad about. Yeah, and I think that personally, I think that's due to money. I think you know it's interesting to talk about Dr. Stephen Greer and his his documentary Unacknowledged, and um, that when they're talking about where this money may have gone, these black black sure. budget programs, and that it probably is for a secret space program. This is what he says. Uh, this is what he's been you know, finding out and maybe, maybe that's not true. Maybe it is true. The money is going somewhere. You talk about area 51, something else is going on. So for me, I don't even know that it's a conspiracy. It's just, it's a fact that there is more going on that the general public is not aware of. Right. And, uh, I, I think in terms of the stars, in terms of the planet or what we think the planet is, the, the fact is that there could be, there could be a lot of options. It might not just be globe versus flat earth. There could be a lot of things going on all simultaneously. And uh, to categorize things and to throw things out and to say people are crazy, it's just, I think that's really denying us getting to the bottom of things. And also to demonize, and this is easy for me to do, but to demonize the people that just want to dismiss it. Because almost everything, like you said about people that find out about flat earth and Everything that was interesting to me, I thought was crazy initially. Kundalini yoga, ayahuasca. I mean, all the, the, these things, I was like, ah, I don't know, these people, it looks kind of crazy. And then, then I find out, for me, that it's, wow, this, this is pretty amazing. I don't know if, um, if I need to say, oh, I believe the earth is round or flat until I get some proof, until I get some proof. And I don't know that anybody needs to call anybody crazy until there's literally proof that can be done over and over. To me, that's what science is. Um, and, uh, and I think, the, of course, scientists will say about the flat earth that it has been proven and it can be done over and over. But then let's go ahead and answer all of Mark's questions. There you go. <laughs> when- yeah, again, if, yeah, if, it, if it was so easy, then why, you know, I, again, it, I, part of it isn't science. Part of it is whoever created this place. But... Look, you right. were preaching the glo- you were preaching the globe without absolute proof for 20, 25 generations, and so if you think for a second, and you're, people are saying, "Well, you know, why why would they lie?" I'm going, "Well, because if they were wrong, they had already been preaching it for four hundred and something years." You think I mean, science is a foundation; it's an institution like anything else. You don't think they're going to protect their own? Of course they are. That science science is no different than a corporation. In that regards, if if somebody came up with a alternative fuel source that would replace oil, you know exactly what the petroleum industry would do. They would bribe them or they would shut them down. And uh, same thing applies to science. They they have to protect their own. And I, I don't blame them in some ways. Well, I think anybody would do it. You're not going to fire yourself. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'd come clean. I'd tell the public, really, would you? Because that means you don't get to go, go to work in the morning. And the university you worked for, they get shut down. And all your friends get shut down. So would you do it? I don't think they would. Well, I agree. It's definitely worth looking into, Mark. I mean, Mark, you have some interesting work. I love it. Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit is the book. Buy it on Amazon. You don't have to look into it, but you could. You could, and it actually won't kill you if you do. And you might decide it's not for you, but you might decide, hey, why aren't these questions answered? That's that's where I'm at. What What's going on? And uh, let's get some answers, and then we don't have to think about it anymore. But the more that the questions aren't answered, the longer it goes on, 
the more momentum it's going to get. And, uh, you know, so I applaud the work Mark is doing. He's on YouTube, uh, Mark Sargent. That's... Um, oh, you can just type... Just, you don't even have to worry about my name. Just type in Flat Earth Clues into YouTube. Okay. And on yeah. Facebook as well, right? Flat Earth uh, Clues I, Book? You know, just type it into any search engine. Oh, I try to pro- I try to promote the, the community if I can. Just do this. If you get a chance, just type in Flat Earth into YouTube and see which... Of, and sort by upload date. When you looked in 2015, that number was at 50,000. If you look this morning, it's 19 million. So, yeah, tell me where it's going. We're not going (laughs) away anytime soon. That's amazing. Definitely, it's getting momentum. I couldn't escape it. I couldn't escape it. And you know (laughs) what? I mean, I'm thankful because I do want to know the answers to these questions. I want to know what's going on in Antarctica. I want to know. I want to know what's going on in space, where, where these images are, these video. I mean, we spent billions of dollars and we have one image? I mean, what's going on with that? So, you know, let's get some answers. And it's only, it's only going to happen if you spread these links. So spread all of Mark's links. And also you can go to www.believe.love. That's our website. And uh, we, help, we help you in so many categories. It's been an honor to have Mark on. Also, uh, youtube.com forward slash believe loves you. And uh, join into the discussion. And thanks so much, Mark, for joining us on Believe. I hope you have a great day or night, wherever you may be. All right. Thank you.